Hi everyone, my name's Jen, I'm an author and a book reviewer and I'm here today to talk to you about some books that I may have purchased and some that have been sent to me for review as well. This wasn't the video I was intending to upload today, I was intending to share a reading vlog but to be quite honest with you, I've been pretty exhausted recently and haven't got round to finishing the reading I want to do for that video, which is absolutely fine and understandable at this stage, I think. So instead of cutting that reading vlog short or rushing it, I thought we'll do that video next week and I will finish reading all the things I wanna read, talk to you about them properly, we'll have those next week, and I'll do this video instead today. And it's actually quite fortuitous because the day that I'm filming this happens to be my birthday. Today I am 37 and I don't often, if ever, get gifted books for my birthday. I think because people probably assume, why does she need any more, which is a fair point. But also I think because I read so much, people are anxious about buying something in case I already have it or have read it, which is completely understandable. So I decided that I would purchase myself six books. It was gonna be one, but then Blackwells were having a bit of a sale. That is allowed. I will allow it. I am permitting myself. Books are for life, not just for birthdays, <laughs> so it's fine. And I think you're gonna laugh when you find out what the books are as well, based on something that I said towards the end of last year, but we'll get around to that in a minute. The other books that I want to talk to you about, I'm super excited about too. Some of them fall into my 2024 most releases, cat most releases, most anticipated releases category. And one of the books in particular feels like it's been written for me, which is thrilling. So I will list all of the books in the description box down below and we can jump right in. I'm sorry if I sound very breathless in this video. This is just my constant state now because my lung capacity is pretty much non-existent and we're just gonna have to deal with that for the next few weeks. First off, two books that I bought for myself, which are very short, but perfectly formed. We have All the Violet Tiaras, Queering the Greek Myths by Jean Mingus. Now, Jean is a friend of mine, so I am slightly biased, but I think that you also will know who she is as well, and I will link her channel in the description box down below. This is part of the 404 Inklings series. That's a imprint that 404 Ink have where authors write personal essays on subjects that they're particularly passionate about. There's a lot of books in this series to do with queer culture. This falls into that category. And I've also read some of their books on disability as well. So in this, as the subheading would suggest, Jean is writing about queering Greek mythology, seeing how authors have retold Greek mythology through a queer lens. It says that she dives into the world of queer retellings and the Greek myths being told anew by LGBTQ plus writers from explorations of gender and identity across millennia to celebrating queer love in its many forms. All the Violet Tiaras invites readers to discover the power to be found in remaking these myths time and again, carving a space for queer stories to be told with all the complexity and tenderness they deserve with a goddess or two for good measure. Jean and I, I think, have very similar feelings when it comes to the power of subversion of texts like this. Her passion particularly lies with Greek mythology, mine with fairy tale retellings, but how wonderful and impactful it can be to take a story that society already knows or thinks they know inside out and to do something new with it, presenting not only this fresh tale for audiences to become acquainted with, but at the same time asking them perhaps why they have never considered this story from this point of view before. I may have had a little cry because she dedicated this book to me. I, when I say I may have had a little cry, I definitely had a little cry, so that was very lovely. Then a book that I mentioned in one of the final reading vlogs that I did in 2023, which was a video where I was reading books that I had bought at Foils, one of those being a collection called More Fire, edited by Kayo Chigonyi which had reminded me that I really wanted to purchase and read this. This is Boyega Adabanjo's pamphlet called Anti-Uncle Poems, um, and I wanted to buy this one because, or I was reminded that I wanted to purchase it, because some of his work was in the anthology that I was reading in that previous video. Boyega really sadly died last year. He was very young. His career was just getting started. His poetry really fizzes. I think that he had a full-length collection scheduled to come out with Faber, and I'm not sure if that is still happening posthumously. I don't know. Um, I know another book that he edited has just come out as well, or is just about to come out. But anyway, I want to inhale all of the poetry of his that I possibly can, and this is one that I needed to add to my shelf. This is the book that I was sent for review, which I said 
feels like it's been created for me. She says very selfishly, but you will see what I mean. This is Monstrum by Lottie Mills. This is a short story collection by a disabled author, which has been compared to Angela Carter. So I mean, yes, it says, in Lottie Mill's haunting modern fairy tales, a father and daughter build a life for themselves on an isolated beach, only to collide painfully with the outside world when their secret refuge is discovered. A young disabled woman opts to receive a perfect pain-free body, but soon finds herself haunted by the one she cast off. A traveling circus master finds the perfect addition to his cabinet of curiosities, but it isn't long before the star of his show sets out to take her revenge. Lottie Mel's stories capture the experience of characters excluded by a society that cannot accept their difference. Eerie, fantastical, hugely ambitious, this collection announces the arrival of an astounding new voice. This is coming out in May and it's published by One World. And yeah, I'm gonna take a, a stab in the dark and say that if you enjoyed my book, The Beginning of the World in the Middle of the Night, you're probably going to enjoy this too. And I really hope that I fall in love with it because it sounds exactly like my cup of tea. It seems that May 2024 is the month for short stories this year because I've also been sent a review copy of this, which is Openings by Lucy Caldwell, which is her third collection of short stories. Her first one was called Intimacies, and this is also coming out in May. It says it's a collection about motherhood and marriage from a passionate, reading from the press release, from a passionate affair in Blitz era London to a highly charged Christmas party in Belfast to a trip to Marrakesh which could form a new family. The 13 striking stories of openings pulse with possibility and illuminate those fleeting but recognisable moments of heartbreak and hope that can change the course of a life. I have a feeling that short stories may be my friend in particular this year. And I did think of sending myself a challenge of reading a short story every day because I have so many short story collections that I want to get through. And it also seems like a manageable thing to do as well. But I thought probably I don't need pressure of setting myself challenges this year. But that is something that is in the back of my brain. And I may turn to if I think I'm gonna find it helpful in a couple of months time. But that one is another one for the TBR. Next, Pushkin sent me a copy of this. This is one of their Japanese novellas. I've mentioned the series that they do before. They did a batch of them about five years ago with work by Hiromi Kawakami, Miko Kawakami, and many others. And I loved a lot of those books. And now they're doing another series. And this is one of them. This is Mysterious Setting by Kazushigi Abe, and this is translated from the Japanese by Michael Emmerich. Interesting to note, this is Miyako Kawakami's husband. This is, I think, a darkly comic novel about a woman called Shiori. She's just turned 18, and she really wants to make it as a singer, but she can't sing at all. She travels to Tokyo anyway, hoping to find stardom, but I think she's betrayed by friends that she meets there, becomes quite disenchanted, and then I believe, well it says, one day she is entrusted with a secret of enormous power. If she chooses to, she can take revenge on the world, which sounds very intriguing. There have been a few books in the last year or so about supernatural characters often tied up within queer love stories. So we had Woman Eating by Claire Coda, Briefly A Delicious Life by Nell Stevens, and also the novel Bored Gay Werewolf. And I think this falls into that category, or at least I'm assuming it does. This is Fragile Animals by Genevieve Jagger. The supernatural creature in this novel is a vampire. And before I read you the blurb, I just want to mention the author bio on the back, which I love, the end of it says, Genevieve is a Scorpio, a sinner, and quite distinctly autistic. You can most often find her feeding magpies and crying over the smallest of things. I feel that last bit in my soul. Okay, so it says, struggling to deal with the familial trauma of her Catholic upbringing, hotel cleaner Noel travels from Edinburgh to the Isle of Butte. There, she meets a man who claims to be a vampire, and a relationship blooms between them based solely on confession. But as talk grows sacrilegious, and the weather outside grows colder, Noelle becomes hounded by memories of her past, her blasphemous sexuality, and the love she lost while stuck in the closet, of her mother's affair with the local priest, and the part she played in ending it. Does that not sound ever so good? It's coming out 
in April. Next up, I requested a copy of this and it's a book that I realized I'd seen knocking around a lot but had never really paid attention to what it was about. And I think that was for two different reasons. Firstly, I tried to read a book of hers before and hadn't particularly got on with it. So it assumed that maybe other books wouldn't be for me either or at least they weren't high up on my priority list for books to get to but also and I think probably the main reason is because it shares a title with another book that I have already read so this is Pet by Catherine Chigi and this obviously shares the title with Pet by Akweka Emeze they're nothing to do with each other but just they have blended together in my head for one reason or another. And then I've seen this book creep up on a lot of people's favorite books of last year lists. And the premise I realized I had never paid attention to before. And when I heard the premise, I became really, really intrigued. And lots of people say actually that this author writes so differently, you know, across all of her titles. So you could read two books by her and think they must be by different people. So this one is called Pet. It says, like every other girl in her class, 12-year-old Justine is drawn to her glamorous, charismatic new teacher and longs to be her pet. However, when a thief begins to target the school, Justine senses that something isn't quite right and that feeling grows ever stronger. Set in New Zealand in 1984 and 2014 and probing themes of racism and misogyny, Pet is a dazzling and chilling psychological thriller by the author of Remote Sympathy. The premise is very, very different to Notes on a Scandal, but I think the psychological thriller set in a school power dynamic discussion does remind me of that particular book by Zoe Heller, which is one of my favourite books ever. So I really would like to give this one a go. And I would love to know if you've read this and what you thought of it. I've mentioned the Faber edition series on this channel before. My favourite, I think, that I've read in that series, which is reissued Forgotten Classics, was Mrs Caliban by Rachel Ingalls. It was one of my favourite books a couple of years ago. And this is another one that they are publishing very shortly. This is called Neighbours and Other Stories by by Diane Oliver and this is a collection of short stories. This book has a new forward by the brilliant Tayari Jones and there's also a quote on the back by Disha Filia who's one of my favourite short story writers ever so that excited me and intrigued me. I hadn't heard of Diane Oliver before which I guess is the point of the series is to bring writers, forgotten writers, into the present day. Um, she is a writer from the 1960s. She was killed when she was just 22 so these are stories she wrote when she was really young and the tagline on the back says, a hundred policemen can't be a little boy's only friends. One black family comes under attack as their little boy prepares to start in an all white school. Friends plan a protest sit-in at the Rosecrest Tea Room only to be arrested. The first black student, always the experiment at a newly integrated college, retreats into her closet. And when a social worker enters a secluded woodland cabin, she meets the fate of all visitors. Diane Oliver's masterful stories resonate today with renewed urgency. Steeped in the nightmarish horror of life for the black community in the Jim Crow era American South, these chilling tales explore toxic racism and the human toll of activism for the cause with heartbreaking empathy and wisdom. This is coming out on the 13th of February, so very, very soon. I was also sent the finished copy of this, which is a sign of her own by Sarah Marsh. It's a debut historical fiction novel also coming out in February. I love the foiling on this. It's reminding me of the hardback of The Book of Strange New Things by Michelle Faber. This is a novel about the invention of the telephone, or more specifically about Alexander Bell and his relationship with a woman called Ellen Lark. Ellen was a deaf woman and he exploited her along with other members of the deaf community, inventing something called um, visible speech, taking deaf people away from sign language and forcing them to communicate verbally to integrate with hearing people so it's about ableism and communication and I'm just really intrigued by this I have actually started reading it so hopefully I will be able to report back on it soon. I also have three secret books here for a TBR which I'm not going to tell you about I will give you a little clue here but these are for a reading vlog where I'm going to be reading other booktubers favorite books of 2023 to see if I love them as well and the reason I wanted to mention them, even though I'm not talking about the titles here, is because when it comes to the end of the year, I always count how many books I've read versus how many books came into my life, just to see what that 
ratio looks like and if I don't include them in a haul I will forget to include them later so we'll talk about those in a reading vlog and hopefully the not too distant future but now the six books that I purchased for myself now in the reading vlog towards the end of 2023 where I talked about going to foils and, and did go to foils um, and purchased a few books I said I was interested in looking at The Kraken Wakes by John Wyndham because I'd recently been revisiting his work I read The Midwich Cuckoos and absolutely loved it I've previously read other titles by him too but it had been about 10 years since I'd read anything and I said I would really love to check out other books by him, but that I already had Chocky sitting on my shelf and that I should probably read that one before I bought other books by him. But it's my birthday and I really decided that I would like to check out some more of his work. Blackwells were having a little bit of a sale online and I discovered that, is it Penguin? can't remember what these are called but Penguin have published basically these editions of John Wyndham's books and when I'd looked at them previously there were only maybe four or five and now they have reissued so many of them including titles I had never heard of before and I may have got very excited and ordered six of them this is the only one that's arrived so far but I will talk to you about all of them and insert the covers of the others and maybe you haven't heard of some of these titles as well because I think we're all familiar with Day of the Triffids and the Chrysalids but there are some more obscure titles that, as I said, at least I had not heard of before and I'm very eager to read them. So he is a sci-fi writer that was writing mostly just after the Second World War and I just love his stuff, obviously, because I bought six books. So let me tell you about them. This is The Kraken Wakes. Something that I really like about his work is that often novels will be told from the perspective of a married couple and you get this narrative that feels very grounded, is just ordinary people who are narrating extraordinary things. So this one says it starts with fireballs raining down from the sky and crashing into the ocean's deeps. Then ships begin sinking mysteriously and later sea tanks emerge from the depths to claim people. For journalists Mike and Phyllis Watson, what at first appears to be a curiosity becomes a global calamity. Helpless, they watch as humanity struggles to survive now that water, one of the compounds upon which life depends, is turned against us. Finally, sea levels begin their inexorable rise and the world looks set to drown. Unfortunately, this sounds extremely current. That's what I think I'm drawn to in his works and what really appeals to me about old school sci-fi in general is seeing what people were writing about decades ago and how often it's still relevant today in an allegorical sense obviously but still relevant so that's the one that has arrived and then I have my phone here with a list of the others that are on their way to me I will scoot over and insert the covers here so the first one is called plan for chaos this is one of the ones I'd never heard of before it says in a city that could well be New York a series of identical women are found dead in suspicious circumstances Magazine photographer Johnny Farthing, who is reporting on the suspected murders, is chilled to discover that his fiancée looks identical to the victims too, and then she disappears. As his investigations spiral beyond his control, he finds himself at the heart of a sinister plot that uses cloning to revive the Nazi vision of a world power master race. Part detective noir, part dystopic thriller, Plan for Chaos reveals the legendary science fiction novelist grappling with some of his most urgent and personal themes. So yes, there's that one. Then we have one that is set in space, which is called Stowaway to Mars. This is about a man called Dale Curtins, who has been tasked with being the first British pilot to fly to Mars, and he has to beat both Russia and America to get there. And as he blasts off from England, it says there's only one problem, a stowaway on his ship called Joan. Not only does her presence wreck calculations and threaten the mission, but her tale suggests that Mars may be more dangerous than they had ever expected. Again, sounds great. Trouble with Lycan is one that I had heard of before, and I think is probably the one that's most similar to Day of the Triffids. It's about two scientists called Francis and Diana who discover a rare lichen that can reverse the aging process. 
So it says, Francis, realising the implications for the world of an ever youthful, wealthy elite, wants to keep it a secret, but Diana sees an opportunity to overturn the male status quo by using the lichen to inspire a feminist revolution. Intriguing. Then we have The Seeds of Time and Consider Her Ways. So these are two short story collections of his. In The Seeds of Time, there's a story of the meteor, which holds much more than meets the eye. In another story, a man is pursued by his own future. We meet a robot with an overactive compassion circuit. And what happens when the citizens of the future turn the past into a gigantic theme park? I think the last one particularly appeals to me and is reminding me of Alan Lightman's book Einstein's Dreams where time materializes in different ways and can be mapped out geographically which is really really fun slash slightly terrifying. Finally Consider Her Ways is a short story collection and one of the stories is about a world where all men have been killed by a virus and women continue to survive in a strict caste system and bottom of the heap are the mothers. In others, we meet the man who accidentally summons a devil and then has to find a way of getting rid of him without losing his immortal soul, as well as the woman who, thanks to an experiment in time, discovers why her lover abandoned her. Do those not all just sound brilliant? I regret nothing when it comes to purchasing those, so hopefully those should arrive in the post very shortly. I would love to know if you have read any of these books or if you're looking forward to picking up any of the releases that aren't out yet or any of the backlist titles. If I have piqued your interest, let me know in a comment down below. As I said, I will list them in the description box down below if that's helpful. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're new to my channel and you like this video and you would like to subscribe, that would be lovely. And if you enjoy my content and you would like to consider supporting me on Patreon, that would be very kind. Patreon is a place where you can tip creators whose work you enjoy and the support I receive over there allows me to keep creating free content for everybody on here and also funds my time making them accessible by creating captions and all of that good stuff. I will see you next Sunday for another video and I'm sending lots of love. Bye.